last Sunday we talked something about seasons and I want to share with you today in the continuation of that and I'm going to talk about uh, Joseph we talked about Jacob and Joseph and today we're going to touch a little bit further into Jacob's line where we're going to talk about the children of Israel and how they were entering the promised land I have only two points and two big ideas that I wanted to share with you if you have your Bible with you would you go to Je Joshua chapter 1 and verse 2 the notes to this message are on our Version Bible app if you click on events and while you are on Version Bible app we also have reading plan from hungry generation two of them that you can read with your friends and with your family Joshua chapter 1 and verse 2 says the following Moses my servant is dead now therefore arise go over this Jordan you and all the people to the land which I am giving to them the children of Israel when Joshua entered the promised land excuse me before he entered the promised land two things started to take place one of them is that God removed Moses and the second one is that God removed manna so two M's very easy to remember Mo and manna God removed Moses God switched Moses or replaced Moses and secondly is God replaced manna manna was a miracle from him it supplied their needs for 40 years and God brought took manna off of the menu they no longer had it available for them and these are the two things that caused their season to change and that's what I want to talk about today this morning when God removed Moses Moses was a great blessing to them Moses was a man of God Moses was full of God he's full of miracles full of insight as great as Moses was he was not able to bring them into the promised land and God I can say removed Moses but Moses died and when he died God comes to Joshua and say hey Moses is dead I want you to see this God doesn't say after that well he died go back to Egypt God doesn't say Moses is dead well so is the promised land God never attaches your future to the people who live your life God never attaches your destiny to someone who leaves you God never attaches your calling to someone who abandons you never put your future in the hands of someone who walk away from your life even if who they are is Moses even if who they are is great they are the best honestly I mean maybe it's a husband or maybe it's a wife and they left you and it wasn't your fault and you feel like so is my life my life is gone your life is not connected to those who leave you it's connected to God who stays with you God says to Joshua I am with you even though Moses is dead last uh, Saturday, uh, last week as I was being dropped off at Charlotte's airport uh, a woman was sitting in the back seat of the car and she was going to some kind of a meeting with the with the land develop, land developer or the or the builder and she said that a few years ago her daughter died and then six months later her husband died in a car accident and she pretty much lost in one year lost her her, her child and lost her husband and so I'm, I'm asking her I'm like how are you doing she said she's like you know what I'm doing better than then I wish I, I'm doing better than I thought I could be doing She's like, I'm actually going in to close on the land, on the house in Charlotte, but I live in California. I said, how are you? Are you into some kind of a business or anything? She's like, no. In fact, when my husband died, I had four children and I knew that I could stay and cry or I realized that God is still with me. I couldn't stop what happened to him, but at the same time, God is with me. She said, I pulled myself up. I went back to school. I got an accounting degree. I didn't have money she said to even pay for my bills but I had a dream that one day I will support the ministry particular ministry that she made reference to she says I had a big dream from God she says one thing led to another I finished the school I got a better job now I invest in other states she's like I don't even know about nothing about investing she says I'm an investor now and I build houses in Charlotte but I live in California my future was not connected to someone who died as precious as Moses is, as valuable as he is, as attached as Joshua was to Moses, it was his mentor. But God's plan was not connected to Moses, it was connected to his word. And because Moses died, the mission did not. 
because Moses died the calling did not in fact it launched Joshua into his own calling when Moses died I just want to encourage someone who had someone leave your life I want to encourage someone who maybe lost someone and you feel like I don't know where to go from this I don't know my life is over your life is not over that person maybe has left you or maybe they died but God's purpose and plan is still active in fact when God changes seasons he does so sometimes by removing people I don't want to come off as saying that you should start celebrating somebody who passed away that is not in any way indication of my message but if some people left you that means that they were not supposed to be there permanently let them go when you build a building you put on scaffolding and scaffolding is there to build a building you cannot build a building without a scaffolding but once you finish building a building you remove the scaffolding when God removes the scaffolding it means a certain season of your life has come to an end you cannot attach yourself to the scaffolding and say I want that back scaffolding does not belong all the time in your house there are people in your life they come for a reason and they come for a season and if God removes the scaffolding listen cry a river build a bridge and walk over that bridge because you're walking into a new season of your life I like what God says in here he says Moses my servant is dead now therefore arise the funeral is over the crying is done he says now arise and what did he say and he says arise and go over that's why I say cry a river build a bridge and go over this Jordan into the land that I have promised you what does that mean that means that when God removes someone it's time to move forward I remember this sermon from our pastor a long time ago I was a teenager our church just started we had this family we have we were very very small but this particular family was very influential in Tri cities and this family they were the wife was pro a prophetess so she gave prophecies now in the Russian culture a prophet is another word for the pastor apostle evangelist combined into one a lot of times in the Russian culture a prophet controls the pastor the church God and everybody in a lot of cases okay just saying in American culture the prophet is completely different I feel like they got it right in our culture it's a little bit different this lady I was there at the meetings when I was 14 and 13 years of age when our church was forming and God used her to prophesy our church into existence meaning she gave prophetic words to our pastor she gave prophetic words that our church will exist that God will use our church to impact the community and the world our pastor was strengthened because of the prophetic words she given but then something happened she did not like the pastor she did not like the church she did not like her style of worship in fact her and her husband mainly her husband they caused so much headache to our pastor and they were really speaking negative things they always they were never happy in the church our church was so small so you can you can see who's not happy because there's like you know two rows and so very difficult to miss the unhappy faces now you can just put your head down and not be seen and so and I remember tensions that I was hearing you know because it was a very small church I heard these rumors the gossip what they were saying and then one day they decided to announce that they do not like where this church is headed to and that they are going to leave see right now if somebody leaves it won't be noticeable but at that time it's a whole road that's gone and we only have three of them it's very noticeable it's very painful what will others think and I heard about the fact the pastor on one Friday night spent all Friday in prayer and he got up on Sunday morning I still remember that sermon he preached a sermon that says the sword of the Lord and the sword of a Gideon and he preached this he says if somebody cannot say in our church the sword of God and the sword of Pastor Vasily you can go and well and they left and I remember sitting I'm a young guy I'm just watching all of this and I was like oh my god what did pastor do I was like maybe we should have changed the vision for them but pastor did not shift the vision of the church that they prophesied about just because 
their perspective, their ideology changed and he did not allow their exit to stop the vision of the church, to stop what God called him to do. It was painful. Did it hurt? Oh yeah. It brought a lot of rumors. It brought a lot of gossip against our church. It brought different things because everywhere they went they said negative things about our church. But one thing that did not happen is pastor felt like just because they left but they helped to strengthen the church in the beginning and now it hurts. Arise and go over. And I am thankful to the pastor that he did not allow what they said to bring our church down and to realize that they helped us up to this point but just because they want to leave that does not mean that what God is doing has to stop it just means they're the scaffolding we don't hate him we take him apart and say God bless you go build someone else's house but we have to move forward I want to encourage somebody in this room who maybe was there to help you to get to this point and right now you feel intimidated you feel scared because they just announced that they're leaving your business. They just announced that they're no longer want to be associated with you. Maybe they just announced that I'm leaving you and I want to do nothing with you. I want to encourage you arise. Don't live in rejection. Don't live in poor little me. Don't live with God abandoned me. If God took to Moses that means he's taking his promise. No, no, no. Maybe it is your time. Maybe the season has shifted. Maybe God is planning something you don't see it yet. Arise and go over. It's time to move. It's time to wipe those tears. Pull yourself up and stand on the promise of God and say what man meant for evil, God will use it for his good. Jeremiah 29 11 it says, For I know the thoughts that I think of you, says the Lord, the thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you future and to give you hope. In Romans chapter 8 verse 28 we, we, the Bible says, is that God plans good things for those who love him and to those who are called according to his purpose and so we have to stand our ground that God is up for something good you may say but I got left but he died but he walked away he gave me a divorce papers but he already moved on with someone else my life is over it's not over because it's not connected to him her and them it's connected to God who says to Joshua as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Another thing that I want to bring to you is in Genesis chapter 13 verse 14. It says the Lord said to Abram after, somebody say after, after Lot had separated from him, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward and westward. Watch this. Genesis 13 10 it says this, Lot lifted his eyes and saw Sodom and Gomorrah and he thought it was like a garden of Eden. Lot lifted his eyes. But when Lot leaves Abraham, God said to Abraham, lift your eyes. It's not something Abraham is seeing on his own. It's God changing his vision. God gave him a new dimension. Because see, Lot was making up his own dreams and visions and they turned out to be a nightmare because Sodom was not a garden of Eden it was a garden of disaster but see when somebody walks away from your life the word lot in original means veil sometimes God has to remove certain people because they are lots in your life they're veils and you cannot see your true vision you cannot see your true identity you cannot see your true future and when they are removed God says lift up your eyes Meaning you're walking down and saying, Lot left me. I must be a bad uncle. Oh, this person left me. Something is wrong with me. And God says, lift up your eyes. Arise, Joshua. And look this way, this way, and this way. Why? Because I did not connect your future to those who left you. I connected your future to my word and my promise. Walk with me. Stand with me. Because I am on your side. I just want to encourage somebody in this room today that when people leave God's vision and calling is still on your life in fact it has gotten closer some of you remember last year at our conference during our race to deliver conference it was a crazy crazy week when apostle Jan Shi who's a friend of this house who was coming for a few years already and did race to deliver conferences and God used them powerfully people were healed and delivered and then a year before race to deliver he got denied visa 
we knew that that's just a little hiccup he will come he got denied visa second time ah it's not a big deal he'll come because we're optimists we are prisoners of hope but we decided to do our part and do our work and so we reached out to a few of people in the in the government and had a letter from a congress united states congress i remember i looked at the last first time i even saw a letter from the congress i was like oh my gosh this is how it looks like this beautiful where a congressman of the united states signed a letter to the embassy united states embassy in cameroon inviting apostle john chi i mean if that doesn't do it there's just you know that it's just not going to work then. On Monday, Apostle John Shi goes to see the ambassador and then on Friday we have a conference. We have thousands of people already registered and coming to the conference. We are fasting on Monday till Wednesday and he's seeing an embassy on Monday. We are sure he's going to get the visa because he has a letter from the embassy. Congress from the from the congressman and the congressman in Richmond also signed his as well so I mean we got we got the authorities on our side God is gonna move he goes in there they denied him before he even came into the office and this is when we knew fasting doesn't end on Wednesday it's going all the way to Friday <laughs> we knew it's not that we didn't want him here it's not that the U.S. Congress did not want him here. Something was up. And I had the word from the Lord that week from this verse that the time of Apostle Jan Chi coming to the conference, it has come to an end. And it doesn't mean to cancel the conference. It means to rise up and go over. Pray, heal and deliver. Please understand. Even at that conference, we still had an offering that we sent to Apostle Jachi for what God used him to do. But we knew that it was our time to step up. And God showed up in a mighty way. And then when we went to Seattle as a church and we saw what the Lord did. And so I sensed that there is a shift of season that happened to Hungry Gen when God pulled somebody who helped us to get to the point that we are at right now. And so what if it's in your life as well that there's somebody who walked away or maybe some things that happen and you feel like man God abandoned you. No, He is actually propelling your growth. He is rising you up. It's your time. It's your season. God has shifted the wind in the realm of the Spirit and He is telling you rise up. Oh man, I was so scared of race to deliver until God showed up. Until God showed up and then we we're like, my God, why didn't the Lord did it earlier? <laughs> Woo! Praise be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage somebody here today that what God did in our church, He's doing it maybe in your life. God is not removing Moses because He's planning your disaster. It's because He's propelling your destiny. You might say, but Joshua was like, Lord, but Moses is gone. Who do I depend on? And God said, me. When someone you depended on left you, you know what God is doing? He's making you to be the person others will depend on. See, Joshua thought God will send him Moses version 2. Little did he know is that when someone you depended on left, it's because God is making you to be the person others will depend on. And you will say, but what about me? You will depend on God in a way you've never depended on Him before. I'm going to tell you one thing. That week, the way we pray and fasted, we've never prayed and fasted like that. We fasted. We fasted longer. We fasted more. But the all-night prayer meetings that we pulled up that week, I mean, God wasn't like, oh, Jesus, if you show up. It was like, Jesus, if you don't show up, bury us alive. We don't want to live. It was dependence on God was God became everything. Why? Because your dependence on God changed when you're disconnected from depending on someone else whom you depended for a long time. And sometimes God is waiting for that to try your dependence on Him. And we over there crying and say, God, but I need someone else to depend on. God says, listen, you're no longer a baby. Depend on me. And if you depend on me, I'll have people depend on you. I'll make you reliable.
I make you dependable. I'll make people pray for you because they depend on you. Before you depended on others, God says, I want to promote you where people will depend on you. You may say, but I'm not ready. If God says you're ready by removing Moses, that means you're ready. Can somebody say amen? God will give you a sign sometimes to leave Laban so that he can change your life. Sometimes God doesn't remove anyone but he creates circumstances where you have to walk away from certain people or remove certain people from your life. Now this is going to get a little bit painful and you only need the Holy Spirit to help you digest this because this does not mean that somebody that you don't like you have to remove from your life. I'm going to read to you a verse. Now Jacob heard the words of Laban's sons saying, Jacob had taken away all that was our father's and from what was father's he had acquired all of his wealth and Jacob saw the countenance of Laban and indeed it was not favorable toward him as before. Then the Lord said to Jacob, return to the land of your fathers and to your family and I will be with you. Watch this. God did not remove Laban from Jacob's life. Laban still had a lot of years. God didn't have a problem with Laban. But I want you to see that three things happen. Laban's sons started to talk behind Jacob's back and Jacob heard it. Somebody on accident sent him the text message. And it was sent to the wrong person. Have you ever did that before where you were saying something about someone and you send it actually to them? The worst thing that could happen to you in this world. I had it happen. There was one person a long time ago. I was on our worship team and, uh, and then I was trying to send a like a feedback. It was a pretty much correction of this person needs to change your dress. Go da, 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 da. And they need to change this and this. And instead of sending it to the worship leader, I send it to that person. Oh my God, I pray that one of us will go to heaven next week because I like I cannot see this person again for the rest of my life. And that's kind of what happened to Jacob. Jacob heard what they said about him. Now that's okay. Bad, people don't like me. I'm successful. People haters gonna hate. Da, da, da. <laughs> Second thing, I want you to see that Jacob looks at Laban and Laban, his father-in-law, no longer has a favorable face toward him. Let's bring it down to 21st century. It's when your workers talk about you. When your boss no longer has a favorable countenance toward you. And this is a good moment to say, you know what, I'm done. But that's not why Jacob left. Jacob did not leave Laban because they talked bad about him behind his back. And he did not leave Laban when his face was not favorable toward him. The Bible says, and the Lord spoke. Don't leave because of drama. Leave because God speaks. Now sometimes God will use the gossip and the drama as a soil in which he will speak. And sometimes people are confused and say, oh no, no, no. The reason why I'm hearing God say to leave and to switch this job or to switch this career or to leave this business and go into someone else is because there's drama and all this stuff. But be willing to understand that God will use the shift. Season has shifted. The season has shifted. That's why they're talking behind his back. That's why Laban is not looking favorably because the season has shifted. He is not supposed to be in Laban's house all his life. And God says to, to Jacob, he says, move, leave, walk away and go to where you're supposed to be. Now, of course, Jacob makes a mistake. He packs all the bags and he doesn't give Laban two week notice. You have to do the right thing. If it's your time to shift jobs, you're noticing the gossip in the, in the office. You're noticing that the management is not looking at you the same way it used to look at you. Don't just leave because it's a toxic environment. Because you don't know if God wants to use you to change that environment. But if God begins to speak to you already, based on the things you're noticing in your work environment, I'm going to ask you that you obey the voice of God because He has a plan and a purpose for your life. And probably Laban's house is not where you're supposed to stay permanently. It's where you're supposed to find your wife. It's where you're supposed to find your livestock. It's where you're supposed to learn certain things, but you need to move forward to the promised land that God has for you. And I just ask, when you sense as seasons are shifting and it's your time to leave your job, it's your time to shift the business, that you don't drop everything. Don't do what Jacob did because the way he exited that season was wrong. That you exit properly, that you exit graciously and that you exit Christ-like. 
that you exit in a way that glorifies Christ and that those people can still find you if they need you come on somebody can somebody say praise be and, and come on somebody give the Lord a round of applause for his goodness and favor John 16 verse 7 says nevertheless I tell you the truth it is to your advantage that I go away for if I do not go away the helper will not come to you but if I depart I will send him to you it's interesting that Jesus also left his disciples and they got sad they said you're leaving us and I want you to see this Jesus says it's because something better is coming when your best people leave you your best days are still ahead of you even when Jesus left he said someone better is coming he says I'm not leaving you as orphans he says I'm leaving you but better things are gonna come I want us to be hopeful and optimistic you know being in the church ministry now for for some time I have learned one thing if the best people leave our church that does not mean that best days has gone with them the best days are not attached to the best people the best days are attached to our God and if he is with us our best days are still ahead of us some of those best people may be talented may be super educated and maybe inc have incredible influence in our city and they might feel like Gideon oh but we are so little left because so many left us it might feel like disciples of Jesus but Jesus is he's, he's like the man he left us Jesus says nevertheless it's better that I leave because he cannot come sometimes God will remove good so he can give you the best and I just want to encourage you be hopeful this year if people are moved from your life expect something better that's coming I am not saying to hate on people that leave I'm not saying to gossip about them I'm saying to leave let them go graciously let them low in, let them go in peace to simply say God I trust you that my best days are still ahead of me my best days are still ahead of me we have a sign that says that the best is yet to come does anybody believe in that if you believe in that give the Lord a round of applause right now your best days are ahead of you touch your neighbor say your best days are ahead of you touch your other neighbor say don't worry about those who left you God is still with you the last thing that I wanted to share with you is when God removes manna Joshua chapter 5 verse 12 it says the following then the manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land and the children of Israel no longer had manna but they ate the food of the land of Canaan that year in the beginning God promised to Abraham Jacob Joseph Moses Aaron he didn't promise them manna he promised them milk and honey manna was not God's plan or God's promise it was God's process and a temporary provision what do you do when God gives you something that provides for your needs and then it stops manna was not God's plan the reason why is because it fed nobody else except the people who received it milk and honey was an overflow manna is just enough manna was miraculous it was from heaven but God's real promise is for the blessing and prosperity to come from the earth manna required folding hands and no work prosperity requires creativity planning hiring thinking doing digging doing something that is why manna is not God's plan for your life it's God's temporary provision until you get to the season where God wants you to be manna is when you get free stuff coming from heaven and we love that we love the welfare mentality we love that when somebody God just gives it to us the problem with manna is it not it's not what God promised you when you were a child it's not what God promised you when you were a teenager and you encountered God manna cannot help orphans it only helps you 
manna cannot help the city it only helps me and manna requires me not to work that's why Israel complained all the time in Egypt in promise excuse me in wilderness because they didn't work they didn't build anything they didn't manage anything they didn't occupy anything they didn't fight anybody they didn't fight any battles that's why they complained all day the only thing they had is miraculous manna and God knew I cannot build sons and soldiers if they only eat manna that's why the first thing that God does in the promised land is he removes that which he gave them and he stops manna why because the produce of the land was ready the shovels were ready the vineyards were ready the wells were ready see provision is when you have just enough but I want to tell you something some of you in this season in this year you are moving out of manna where some of the jobs even you had that supplied for your needs and you were grateful to God at one time you thank God for that job and that's gonna come to an end and it's not because God hates you it's not because God is gonna throw you under the bus it's because your season has shifted and you're stepping into the promised land hallelujah what is a promised land promised land is when God doesn't give it to you and you do nothing promised land is where you work promised land is where you write create built promised land is where you think promised land is where you take classes because promised land you don't get stuff given to you you work and a lot of us have, have felt like work is a curse no 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 my friend work is not a curse work came before curse God created you to work in fact God works when we will go to heaven we will also work with God your, your work utilizes your creativity it utilizes your education it utilizes your gift and your personality promised land will not work without you working that means you're gonna have to write you're gonna have to dream you're gonna have to create you're gonna have to build a business you're gonna have to have a plan you're gonna have to get land you're gonna have to rent you're gonna have to work the beautiful part is that God won't give you manna that's just enough for your family God will give you milk and honey that's enough for others and for you I want to encourage every person today if you're living on just enough and God is supplying your needs I want you to get ready because God is going to shift your season and sometimes the way he shifts your season is you get laid off or you get fired now if you get fired because you show up late and you don't do your work that's not God taking off the manna that's God disciplining you for not doing your job <laughs> So don't go ahead praising God I just want to praise God no 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 you're not punctual and you're not doing a good job you're lazy <laughs> that's not praising God you need to be at the altar repenting and say God change me transform me and make me like Christ but if God switches your takes the manna off of the menu it's because something is better is coming up that's connected to your gift your potential and what God has for you in Jesus name there was a story of first Kings chapter 17 verse 7 it says the following and it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land then the word of the Lord came to him Elijah saying arise go to Zarephath which belongs to Sidon and dwell there see I have commanded a widow there to provide for you maybe you're like Elijah you lived on manna it was providing for your needs and you're like man I'm so grateful for manna but the brook dried up the manna stopped and God speaks to Elijah and he doesn't say I want you to right now pray for the brook to have more water God did not instruct Joshua to say pray for more manna to come God says shift things move on there's something better that's waiting for you don't sit there and wait for the brook to have more water move forward to the widow's house because I have commanded her to provide for you watch this when Elijah was at the brook ravens fed him and the brook gave him water but nobody else was affected because of his provision provision doesn't help others it only helps you and while you have a praise report other people cannot join you to praise your God the prosperity is when he went to the widow's house and not only he was provided the widow was provided and the son was raised from the dead that is prosperity that's why God will take us from the brook 
to the widow's house. Why? Because God is not just interested that your bills are paid for. God is interested that you hire others and their bills are paid for. See God is not just interested that you have life John 10 10 but that you will have it more abundantly because if you are filled it's for you. If you overflow it's for others. If I pour water into a cup and it comes to an end anything that's overflow spills outside of the cap cup. God wants you to have overflow because anytime you have overflow you hire more people. Anytime you have overflow you share it with others. God knows as a Christian when your cup runs over other people will drink from your overflow and that's why God takes Elijah and says your brook is dry but I want you to go and help a widow. I want you to go and raise her son. I want to supply her needs as well as yours. And many of us we're scared of the overflow. Some of you, you come from a religious mindset where you're like the word overflow throws you into a cold heat or cold sweat. You're like, ooh, prosperity, ooh. <laughs> if you're afraid of overflow, the root of that fear is pure selfishness. Pure laziness because overflow tells you and teaches you to think differently. When you were an employee, it was very easy. Show up at nine, leave at five. But when you become a boss, that's not that easy because now you have to create things. It requires you to step out of your laziness and it requires you to be a blessing to others. God created you to have overflow. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. That's just enough, that's manna. But then when I go to verse 2, verse 3 and then verse 4 going through the valley, I go to verse 5, Psalm 23, my cup runs over. That is God's promise. God's plan is not manna. God's plan is milk and honey. God's plan is not that you just go through just enough. It might be where you are. It might have been where you've been for 40 years. In any way am I saying that is not God moving in your life. He is moving in your life. He is supplying your needs according to your riches and your glory. I'm just asking if he pulls manna off of menu, don't panic. He has something better. He has his ultimate plan for you where you will have more than enough for others to help others in your life and be a blessing to those around you who don't have. You will be somebody's miracle. You will be somebody's answer to prayer. Somebody will be applying for a job and your company will be the company God will use to answer their prayer. In there you had a miracle. In here you become a miracle. And that's why between here and there is a season of confusion. It's a season of where is God? Why did they fire me? Why was manna was removed? Why did the brook dry up? Why did that position got removed? What, what do I need to do? Do I go back and look for manna more? Or do I press in and trust God and say that God has got it in control and God doesn't remove something. He doesn't plan something better. Be optimist. Have faith trust in God. I believe with Jesus our best days are ahead of us. I believe with Christ we will sponsor others. I believe with Christ we will be a blessing to our city. We will believe to the poor families in our community. I believe with Christ we are going to rise up and maybe some of you who didn't even finish school you had a bad record but God is going to raise you up. You're going to be a hard-working person. You're going to be creative and God is going to open doors for you that maybe have never been opened to any of your family members and you will be a blessing to your family. You will be a blessing to your marriage. You will be a blessing to your school in Jesus name. I want you to rise to your feet. I'm going to read to us the last verse. Then he took the five loaves and two fish, looking up to heaven. He blessed and broke them. Gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. And when they had all ate and were filled. Somebody say all ate. All ate. Somebody say filled. filled. And 12 baskets of leftover. Somebody say leftover. leftover. 12 baskets of leftover of fragments were taken up by them. They did not have enough to feed the multitudes. Can I have a little napkin or something? They did not have enough to feed the multitudes. And maybe today that is exactly where you are at. You don't have enough to feed your family. You don't have enough to pay your bills. You know what Jesus asked when they had not enough? He says, bring me what you have. Can I ask you right now, can you put Jesus first in that not enough? 
can you still in that season say Lord I'm gonna still tithe I'm gonna still trust and I'm gonna still work hard because God doesn't bless lazy and the Bible says when Jesus touched it they all ate watch this they were filled and when Jesus touched it this is Jesus who some people believe in here he only gives you just enough that's not God he wants to give you also left over and then he says these fragments they need to be collected I don't want them to be wasted meaning when you have left over it's not a time to get a new iPhone it's not a time to oh that's it we need to go and get a new car now because we have left over we need to now get a bigger house because we have left over Jesus wants us to steward the leftover he wants us to steward the extra, to manage it well, to invest it well, to leverage it well, not just waste it like poor people do, buying nicer, shinier things and then they're poor again. This is the year where God will take us from not enough to trusting in Him, putting Him first and we will eat, we will be filled and we will have baskets left over to be a blessing to others. Come on somebody. Let's begin to pray right now. We're going to pray in just a moment. Our team is going to sing a song. We're going to pray that this year be the year of overflow. And this will be the year. I want to pray specifically for people who lost someone or who are going through a very painful season where somebody walked away from your life. Maybe scaffolding was removed and you are hurting right now. I want to have a word to be spoken over your life today that God is stepping in right now. For those of you that season has shifted and your supply has changed, that God is doing something new in Jesus' name. Let's lift our hands right now. Begin to worship Jehovah Jireh. Begin to worship the Lord our shepherd. Begin to worship the one who supplies all of our needs according to his riches and his glory. In Jesus' name. He will do. And he's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause He won't give up on you. He's able, oh, 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 oh. He is able, oh, 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 people that maybe you're going through a season where the scaffolding was removed from your life maybe some people that you depend on that you trusted in they left you you want to pray that God's going to strengthen you in this season and that God's going to give you grace to continue to look on God's promise 
that God's going to help you to move on from that season, from whatever left you, however maybe said certain things about you, maybe betrayed you, that God, it's, it's God's strength will begin to assist you. God's grace will begin to overpower you to look towards his promise and not what you have lost and not what somebody said, somebody left you or did this or did that. So if that's you, maybe you need prayer, just lift up your hands and we're going to pray for you. We're not going to ask anybody to come front. If you're saying right now, I need prayer in this season. It's a painful season every life. We might not know what you're going through, but God knows. If we want to pray for strength, wisdom, and grace, and God's love to overpower you right now in this season. If that's you, just lift up your hands. I'm going to pray for you right now in Jesus mighty name father we pray for every single person if you see somebody's hands raised just place your hand on their shoulder right now cover them to begin to pray for it for strength and if you, leaders you see them just begin to pray for them right now father we ask Lord that you're gonna give them strength Lord father we ask you that you're gonna father remind them of your promises remind them of the good thoughts that you think towards them the plans that you have for them to prosper them not to abandon them Lord but to make them father reach the promise so we ask you give him strength Lord we ask you Lord that you're gonna father stir up their faith to believe and trust in you that you are a faithful God that you are a good God father the thoughts you think towards them father are to prosper them to give them hope to give them a future father we ask you give them a steadfast spirit not to give up not to give in but to continue to go forward to continue to move on Lord as those people as those things maybe opportunities has left them as doors have been shut in front of the Lord to continue to move forward as your grace is as your mercy is new for them every morning in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name in Jesus name right now I want to pray for those people that are here in this place that maybe you had men not in your life maybe you were like prophet Elijah you were at the brook and you had provision you had enough to pay your bills you had enough to get by it wasn't anything extreme but you know you were happy you were satisfied and now your your feathers kind of got uh in your nest got roughed up and then you're like you're wondering where what's going on in this season of confusion you have conflict at work maybe you got fired you got laid off the company closed down and and you're in this place where you don't know what to do next you don't know where to go next you don't know whether you should be looking for another job whether you should, should be going back to school you don't know if you should be starting a business you're just in a place of confusion you don't understand what happened you don't even know if it was God it was you whether it was company you're just in this place and you need direction and you you need guidance right now I want to pray that God will begin to move on your behalf that God will begin to give you ideas that God's gonna begin to visit you in dreams in visions that when you pray Pray and you have a devotional time that God will begin to give you promptings that God will give to you just will give you some ideas what to do next God provided up to this point but God is taking you to the next level and the next level it will not be uh, it will not be in your comfort zone it will be uncomfortable but you're gonna have to trust God in this uh, season you're gonna have to pray more you're gonna have to see God more you're gonna have to trust God more so if that's you you're in between seasons you know it's something shifted but you don't know where and what you have to do lift your hands and I want to pray for you right now come on lift your hands I want to pray for you we as a church we're gonna agree and pray we're gonna ask God that God's gonna visit you, that God's gonna give you a dream, a vision, that God's gonna give you guidance, that God's gonna give you directions. It can come in many different forms, but God will do it for you in Jesus' name. If you see a hand lifted nearby you, just put your hand on their back. We're gonna pray for them on their shoulder and we're gonna encourage and stand in faith with them. Leaders, those of you that are here at the church, if you see people near or by you, just go out and Church, like there's people, some, some people on the back there. Leaders, let's just surround those people. Every hand lifted, let's pray for them. Those of you that are watching us online right now, if you're in between seasons, your season is shifting. God wants to move you forward. God wants to prosper you. He wants to take you into the promised land. Right now, let's pray together. Let's believe God for miracle in your life in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for every person that is here in Jesus' name. 
Father, I pray for guidance, for wisdom, for direction, God. I pray for provision. I pray for capital, God. I pray for funds to go back to school. I pray, God, for capital to start the business, for capital to expand. I pray, God, Lord, for ideas where to apply next, God. Which company to go into, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you send your angels to pave the way forward in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that by your Spirit, you will move us, God. You will inspire us, Lord. That you will speak to us in night, God, in visions and dreams. That you will prompt us, God, as we meditate on your word, God. As we pray in Jesus' name. That you will lead us, God. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will shut the doors that need to be shut. And I pray, God, that you will open the doors that need to be opened. Lord, we speak open doors, God. We speak this year, God, to be a year of open opportunities and open doors in Jesus' name. I declare your provision, God. I declare your direction. I declare, God, your spirit, God. Lord, your wind, God, to blow into our sails, to move us into the direction that you have for us this year. In Jesus' mighty name, we declare your release, Father. The release of finances, God. Release of open doors, resources. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, let's just lift those hands right now. Begin to declare that over your lives. The promises you carry will become true. He's gonna fulfill, He's gonna fulfill every promise. He will take you from wilderness to promised land. Put your trust in Him right now. Lift your eyes, Abraham. Lift your eyes, Joshua. I am with you, says the Lord. I will walk with you. You will pass through the Jordan and you will go into a new season. Yes, Lord. He is able. Is able. He did not connect his promise to those that left you. He is with you. His presence is with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. You told Israelites to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. For the Philistines you see today, you will see no more forever again. I thank you, Father, for your promise. Because you said, for I know the thoughts that I think of you, says the Lord. The thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and to give you a hope. Lord, I thank you that all things work out together for those who love you and for those who are the called according to your purpose, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your promise. Today we stand. We look forward with the eyes of faith to this year. That this will be our best year. That this year, Lord God, those people who dreamed of having a house, that they will have a house this year. Lord, we pray that this year, that those who believe for documents to be sorted out in the courts, God, and there will be a favor in that area, Lord. Lord, I believe that this year will be the year, Lord God, for those who dreamed of having a business, that they will launch into the deep and have a miracle catch. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray that this will be the year where those that did not have enough, and they will see Jesus do a miracle miracle and not just fill them but give them overflow that it will be a blessing and they will support causes and they will increase their giving and they will increase their serving and they will increase going to mission strip God and doing what you call them to do Lord we believe in breakthrough we believe that you're gonna use us and make our life and life support people around us better because of your goodness and your favor father in Jesus name every head bowed and every eye closed I would like to give an invitation to anyone in this room today who have not yet made Jesus the Lord and the Savior of their life. If you are far away from Christ, if you are not giving your life to the Lord, I want to tell you that Jesus loves you so much. God loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. No man can come to God but by Jesus Christ. If you need to get right with the Lord today, if you need to surrender and submit your life to Jesus, if you maybe grew up in a religious home but you do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, today I'm going to give you that opportunity. When I count to three, I'm going to ask you to just raise your hand high and say, Vlad, I would like to get saved. I would like to have Jesus forgive me of my sin. I would like to join the team Jesus. I would like to join His kingdom. I would like Him to change my life. One, two, three. Raise that hand high. You say, hey, I would like to get saved today. I would like to give my life to the Lord today. I would like to come back to Christ. I thank you, Jesus, for your grace. 
I thank you Jesus for your mercy I thank you Jesus for your love and for your kindness in Jesus mighty name hey this is Pastor Vlad and thank you for watching this sermon please click on the subscribe so that you can be a part of our hungry generation YouTube community and click on the bell as well so that you can be notified when we upload the new sermon thank you for watching and God bless you